Mr. Benapala, you have made a very interesting proposal, and that is the Security Council should pass a resolution to solve this impasse as far as nuclear disarmament is concerned or nuclear ammunition is concerned. Could you kindly uh, dwell on that proposal and explain to us what it is? First of all, it's not my proposal. I must say that the ownership of the proposal is with Professor David Coppolo of uh, Georgetown University, who published this in an article in the Georgetown University Journal, where I read it. And I was intrigued by the proposal and the originality and the simplicity of it. As we all know, the CTBT is uh, nowhere near entering into force, although next year it will be 20 years since it was signed. The negotiations were initiated by President Clinton, who was very far-sighted in doing that, and he was the first one to sign the treaty when it was finally adopted. Unfortunately, the U.S. is lagging behind with regard to ratification and is one of eight countries who have still not ratified the treaty. And because Article 14 of the treaty requires Annex two countries who are 44 to all of them sign and ratify before it enters into force. The treaty remains in a situation where it is not in force. But of course, the CTBTO provisional secretariat is functioning, the international monetary system is functioning, and everything is ready. All systems are go except for this uh, lacuna with regard to this ratification by eight. Now, we know that everything revolves on what happens in the U.S. Senate. Unfortunately, that is the stumbling block, and because of the fierce competition between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party in the United States policy, politics, the Congress of that country is dysfunctional. And uh, this is sad because this is a democracy and uh, we all look to the United States leadership in many matters of global importance. And it is superpower. And uh, it is the only surviving superpower. But unless the U.S. ratifies, I think there are many other countries who will not ratify. So that is why we have to see that the U.S. acts. Now, the complexion of the U.S. Senate is unlikely to change until 2016 when elections are due. So that means till then we have to wait and sit on our hands until that happens. But rather than do that, and because of the risk of the existing moratorium, and there is fortunately a moratorium on the part of the nuclear weapon states with regard to testing, but that moratorium is very fragile. Mm -hmm. There is a likelihood that DPRK might test. Yeah. And at this conference, we heard, to our dismay, Mr. William Perry, former Secretary of Defense, actually say that he has been informed that Russian scientists are pressing the political leadership of Russia to resume testing. Now, Russia is a country which has signed and ratified the CTBT. How can they do that? If this is true, and I would uh, like to have confirmation of this. But if it is true, there is therefore a grave uh, danger that the CTBT is in some kind of peril. And uh, so I think since the Security Council is the custodian of international peace and security according to the Charter, a unanimous resolution on the part of the Security Council stating that the continuation of the moratorium and the norm of not testing nuclear weapons mm -hmm. is a fundamental element of international security and uh, peace would help to bolster the legitimacy of the CTBT and would help to strengthen the moratorium mm -hmm. and our confidence that the moratorium will continue. Now this Professor Coppolo's proposal uh, according to international lawyers, is impeccable. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't got the same weight as a treaty, but of course it is also uh, a very, very important uh, mm -hmm. element of uh, international order. And uh, if we can have countries agree to it, I think it will be a very useful way 
pending the entry into force of the PT, which, which I think is mm -hmm. vital. But pending the entry into force of the PTBT, we are going to have this uh, secondary concert. Well. But do you think uh, the P5 would uh, join? Well, I can't see why the P5 would not join. Mm -hmm. All five of them have signed the treaty. Two of them have not ratified it. Mm -hmm. China and United the United States. The United States, we know why. But the administration is in favor of it. And as you know, in the Prague speech, uh, President Obama said he was going to aggressively pursue this. He has not been able to do it because of the politics, mm -hmm. domestic politics of the United States. So as a decision in the Security Council is entirely that of the executive. So he could make that decision himself, unilaterally. Secondly, the Chinese, they themselves are in favor of it. And we've heard official Chinese representatives saying that they are not uh, waiting until the US uh, signs it. Before they sign it, they will act on their own. So in other words, there is no policy objection to their ratification. It's again an internal process because the uh, state council has to ratify it and so on and so forth. So if that, if we take them at their word, then there should be no policy objection. And as for the other three, France, Russia and the UK, they have all signed and ratified. So the text of a resolution which says that uh, uh, testing yeah. is a vital, uh, uh, no testing rather, is a vital yeah. Yeah. part of uh, international peace and security. It's, it's part of the water sign. Well, it seems on the surface to be a no-brainer. It requires some initiative on the part of the Security Council to propose this. And a non-nuclear weapon state can easily propose it. Do you plan to undertake any initiative? Well, uh, a group of friends of mine in, in New York uh, uh, are discussing it. And uh, it will probably be an NGO initiative. Uh, but it has to have a existing member of the Security Council who will propose it. So the question is, who is going to bail the cat? Yeah. <laughs> That's always the fundamental question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much.